He like looks over at it. He doesn't have time to react to it or anything. And all of a sudden a spear comes flying out of the cave and it goes right through one of his teammates. In 2002, an army infantry unit just vanished. They were on patrol in the Kandahar mountain range in Afghanistan. The army decides that in order to, to find them, because this is obviously a really big deal, they would get their most elite unit. So the army green berets, that's their very elite special forces. They would send them out to find this missing unit. So they, they leave via helicopters and they fly out to the Kandahar mountain range. So four kilometers about from where they believe was this infantry unit's last known location. They knew that they were in enemy territory and at any time they could get into a gunfight, they could be ambushed. At some point they noticed a little bit farther ahead that there was this distinct pathway leading up the mountain and kind of around the corner and they decided let's just go up there and so the team starts making their way up this goat trail and as soon as they start making their way up they start noticing that there are little pieces of american military equipment on the ground there are pieces of radios like whip antennas and housing of the actual radio itself they found military style backpacks as well and they started finding pieces of uniform that belonged to the missing infantry unit they knew based on the patches that were on these uniforms so as they're walking up this trail of broken equipment and uniforms they start seeing some bone on the ground they didn't know if it was human bone or what they start seeing broken bones scattered on their way up to this kind of plateau. And so now the, the special forces team, I mean, they're incredibly well-trained. And so I would imagine that when they saw this, what they were thinking is this was an ambush. This infantry unit was ambushed and we're in this, we're probably coming up on the ambush site. And so they're, you know, taking defensive positions and they're moving slowly and very tactically up this mountain and they're keeping their, their weapons pointed at the leading edge on their way up to the top of this mountain. They get to this plateau. Uh, it's like a flat section of the mountain, right? It's like a steep mountain and there's like this little like shelf almost. And there's more equipment scattered and more bones scattered across it. And there's all these cave entrances right in front of them. It's as if they were intentionally placed so that they fed out onto the shelf. And so they start moving towards the mouth of the caves and they realize without even getting very close that even though the mouth of these caves are pretty large and everybody could go into the cave, there is a steep drop off. Like you'd walk in and then it just goes straight down and someone kind of peered over the edge and couldn't see how far it went down. And they decided that it was just too dangerous to go in there because clearly something happened here where American lives were lost, you know, based on the tattered uniforms and equipment. And so let's just pull back and take up defensive positions, looking at the entrance to all of these, these cave entrances. And so as leadership goes down, kind of out of the, the fatal funnels, if you will, outside of these caves, Mr. K, who's the guy who's told us this whole story, he said he's looking at one of the entrances to the caves and he sees a flash of movement inside of the cave. And he like looks over at it, he doesn't have time to react to it or anything. And all of a sudden a spear comes flying out of the cave, this big, like massive lance comes flying out and it goes right through one of his teammates whose name was Dan. And so Dan's down. And so the whole team saw that. They didn't see who threw it, but they certainly saw the spear hit Dan. And so as they're like shocked and just keeping their weapon up, wondering what's gonna happen, out runs this, by Mr. K's account, a 12 to 15 foot tall man with a red beard and red hair down past his shoulders, comes charging out, howling like a war cry. He's got animal skins for clothes. He just looks super dirty. And he runs over to Dan to pull the spear out and probably use it again. And the rest of the team at this point is broken out of their shock of what they're seeing. And they start engaging this giant. And the giant didn't really have a chance to fight back. And in 30 seconds, the giant is down too. So Dan's down and the giant is down. And the whole team is like, what just happened? So after the dust had settled and all the, the, the shooting had stopped, they went to check on Dan and, and Dan had passed away. And so they called back into higher headquarters and they're trying to describe what happened a very large, possibly human creature through a projectile that hit Dan. So they sent two helicopters out, one to retrieve Dan and the team, the other just to hoist up this very large human-like creature because they wanted to know what it was. And they struggled mightily to get it, get the netting around this big creature. Uh, it ended up weighing over 1,100 pounds. 
I had six toes on each foot and had six fingers on each on each hand. They load it up, they string it onto the silo and it takes off and the team gets into the other helicopter and they go back expecting to be debriefed as soon as they get back to base. The helicopter with the giant would fly to an airfield and they would meet up with a crew of a C-130, which is another big military aircraft. The pilot of that craft would publicly say that he remembers seeing a 12 to 15 foot tall giant person with six fingers on each hand, six and six toes on each foot. And he would say that's what he saw, even though it was later redacted and made top secret. Mr. K and his team, they flew back to the base to be debriefed. And so they had to provide an after action report. It's something done in the military. You go out, you do any operation, you come back and you write up what happened. And so Mr. K and his team decided to just be honest about what they saw. And so they described it again in detail, you know, six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. You know, it came out, it threw the spear, it hit Dan, you know, it's this horrible situation. And once they submitted it, their leadership said, you got to rewrite that. Like, we're not going to accept that. So Mr. K said they ultimately rewrote it. And it just sounded like a typical engagement in the mountains with the enemy. And it was made top secret and then they never saw it again. And that was it. Mr. K said that he and the rest of his team also had to sign non-disclosure agreements to not ever talk about what they saw. Uh, and they never got any word about what actually happened. Like, what did they do with the body of the giant? And they just never got any clarity out of it. It was just basically made top secret, redacted, and they were told don't talk about it. So it would take until 2016 when Mr. K finally just said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go public with what I saw because my friend died and they're acting like, you know, this didn't happen, but it did happen. And so that's why we have this detailed report of this mission where they came in contact with the giant of Kandahar.